This is an overview of an article entitled Postmortem Genetic Testing for Cardiac Ion Channelopathies in Stillbirths, published in the January 2018 issue of Circulation Genomic and Precision Medicine. Stillbirth is a substantial health issue worldwide, with an estimated 3.2 million cases occurring each year, on the order of one in every 200 births in developed countries. Two-thirds of the cases are attributed to placental complications, and an additional fraction of cases have gross genetic abnormalities, as indicated by abnormal karyotypes. Perhaps up to 30% of stillbirths have contributions from gene mutations, with the most likely candidates being mutations in genes previously linked to sudden cardiac death, such as those involved in the long QT and short QT syndromes. The authors of the paper under discussion assessed a series of cases of unexplained stillbirths in four hospitals in the UK between 2007 and 2013. They were able to obtain high-quality DNA, suitable for sequencing studies, in 70 out of 242 cases. For these 70 cases, they performed targeted sequencing of 35 genes, 12 long QT or short QT genes, and 23 genes nominated by genome-wide association studies and other genetic studies of clinically relevant phenotypes such as QT interval, catecholaminergic, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, developmental disorders, and sudden cardiac death. On the right is the schematic explaining how the authors prioritized variants identified by the sequencing studies. Out of a total of 327 non-synonymous variants in the 70 cases, after filtering by rarity in the population and predictions of pathogenicity, there were 28 rare variants of uncertain significance, seven rare variants of uncertain significance that had not been previously cataloged, and five rare variants for which there was either prior functional evidence or, in one case, for which functional data was obtained in this study. Here is that one variant, arginine 40 to glutamine in the gene KCNJ2, which encodes an inwardly rectifying potassium channel and has previously been found to be a cause of a long QT syndrome and a short QT syndrome. The variant is located in the N-terminal portion of the protein, as shown here. Just going by the location alone, it is unclear without functional testing whether this variant might be pathogenic. The authors tested whether the KCNJ2 arginine 40 to glutamine variant impaired the function of the protein product. Without getting too deep into the technical details, the experiment involved placing a normal or wild type or WT version of the KCNJ2 gene into cells. The arginine 40 to glutamine or R40Q mutant version of the gene into cells as well as the gene with a different KCNJ2 variant, T535A, and a negative control called PCDNA 3.1 here. Compared to the normal WT version of the gene, the R40Q mutant gene caused impaired electrophysiological properties in the tested cells, as can be seen in the top figure and the bottom figure shown on this slide. In contrast, the T535A mutant gene looks identical to the normal gene. These results indicate that the arginine 40 to glutamine mutation might be pathogenic. Here are the five rare variants in long QT syndrome related genes that have prior functional evidence of pathogenicity including the KCNJ2 variant shown on the last two slides. There's a higher likelihood of these variants being the cause of fetal demise, compared to variants of uncertain significance identified in other cases in this study. In conclusion, 
This study of 70 stillborn cases identified a number of rare or novel variants in genes previously linked to cardiac ion channelopathies and sudden cardiac death. Five of the variants have functional evidence suggesting they might have directly contributed to fetal demise via sudden cardiac death, whereas causative roles for the larger number of variants of uncertain significance found in this study are less clear. Functional testing of those variants of uncertain significance could potentially shed light on whether they contributed to fetal demise.